ברוכתה יהוע אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו וציוונו על ספירת האומר היום יום אחד. Blessed are you, Yahuwah, our Lord, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to count the Omer on this day, day one. Amen. And thank you, Abba Yahuwah, that you have instructed me, Father, for us to be able to come to a time now of having to read this book of Jeremiah. And I thank you, Father, that as we come together now, um, as we come together now in reading this book, I pray, Abba Yahuwah, that you will open up the mind of our understanding, Father. Open up our hearts, open up our minds to be able to receive the word that you want to be able to reveal in the hour, in the time that we are in, so that we may be able to go into the season ahead of us, in this preparation time, in this time of when you, Yahushua, will be dwelling with us in this time by spirit and by power and in spirit and in truth, by your Ruach that you want to lead us. And so, Abba Yahuwah, I thank you that you alone be the one to be able to open up to us this book of Jeremiah for us to understand the depths of what you want us to see. As we come in obedience to you, in counting the Omer, and as we do, we want to make it meaningful in not just coming and saying, I come and I say day one of the counting of the Omar, but to be able to make something meaningful, something that you want to be able to help us to come set apart, to set ourselves apart in the preparation that we are in, leading up to the time of Shavuot, for us to receive your Ruach HaKodesh. And so I thank you, Father, that we commit this time to you in this reading of this book of Yeremiah And I thank you, Father, that you will open up your word for the glory and the honor of your name, Abba Yehoah. Amen. So before we start, Yeremiah, who means? So when we're going to look at the book of Yeremiah, who? So it's not Jeremiah. We say Jeremiah, but Jeremiah was the name that was given to him when they translated it. But his name was Yeremiah, who? And Yeremiah, who means? Whom Yahuwah has appointed, Yah will raise up. So understand, he was one whom Abba Yahuwah appointed, and he was the one that Yah will raise up. So we must understand that we are in a time now where Abba Yahuwah has appointed each one of us for a time such as this, and he's the one that is going to raise us up in order to be able to go forth like Jeremiah, that was called in a time, in a season of when there was going to be much darkness in the land of Eretz Israel, and he had to be a light and he had to be a voice for the Father. And so we must understand that this book is going to reveal to us the fact that we need to be able to see ourselves as are we those whom Yahuwah has appointed whom Yahuwah will raise up at the appointed time because he's raising up a people, a set-apart people to be able to go forth now. So let us start with chapter 1. The words of Yeremiah, the son of Yilkiyahu, of the priests who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. So whom the word of Yahuwah came, to whom the word of Yahuwah came in the days of Yoshiyahu, son of Ammon, sovereign of Yehuda, in the thirteenth year of his reign. And it came in the days of Yeh, I don't like that Yeho Kwaim, Yahu Kwaim, son of Yehoshiyahu, sovereign of Yehuda, Yehuda, until the end of the eleventh year of the Tzidikiahu, son of Yoshiahu, sovereign of Yehuda, until the exile of Jerusalem in the fifth new moon. Interesting. They were going to go into exile in the fifth new moon. We are in the first new moon. So understand, there's something significant that could very well be taking place five months from now. 
Now the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. So you see, Yeremiah was appointed and Yahuwah was going to raise him up. And he was one that was going to be appointed to be a prophet to the nations. Now, if you really want me to go deep, I can give you what Ananoth, Anathoth, that word, Anathoth, means, that word means answer to praise. Yoshiyahu means Yah heals. Yahu Kaim, Kwaim, means Yahuwah raises up. And Tzedek Yahu is Yahuwah is righteous. So understand, in every one of those words, in every one of those names, is answer to praise. So there was praise going up. There was, the Father wanted to bring healing. And Yahuwah was going to raise up. And Yahuwah is going to raise up what? Righteousness. And this is everything that Eliyahu is going to have to represent. Remember, Yeremiah was a Kohen. Yeremiah's father was in, he was in line to become a high priest. He was in line to become a priest. He was a priest. His father was a priest. He was part of the Kohenim. He was a Kohen. He was a Levi. And he was in line to be able to become part of the priesthood to offer those sac those that to offer even the incense for the father. And so when he's raising up, we must understand that there's answer to praise whom Yahuwah heals. Yahuwah raises up. Yahuwah is righteous. And so that's why at a time when we are in a dark time, Father raises up his true prophets. Father will raise up his servants in order that in the time of darkness, they may be able to come and bring the people back into coming back to prayer, coming back to understanding that Yahuwah is one who heals, coming back to understanding Yahuwah will raise up, coming back to understand Yahuwah's righteousness. So, we continue to read, And I said, O Master Yahuwah, see, I do not know how to speak, for I am a youth. And Yahuwah said to me, Do not say I am a youth, but go to all whom I send you, and speak whatever I command you. So understand, Father is going to want to send you forth. Father is going to want to be able to send you forth. Do not worry about what they look like. Do not worry whether they're going to accept you or not accept you. Do not look at their faces. You are to be able to speak whatever he commands. Do not fear their faces for I am with you to deliver you, declares Yahuwah. And so many times, especially with the prophets, if they're going to fear the people, they will not speak the Father's word. But if they don't fear the people, they speak what the Father tells them to speak. Because who must they fear? They must fear Yahuwah and not the people. Then Yahuwah put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahuwah said to me, See, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the reins to root out and to pull down, to destroy to overthrow, to build, and to plant. So you see, this is exactly what the work of a prophet has got to do. The prophet has got to come in, and he's got to root out. He's got to root out. He's going to have to pull down. So he roots up all that is not of the Father. He pulls down all that is not of the Father to destroy, to overthrow. And then what does he do? He comes to build, and he comes to plant. So that is what the Father needs us to do, to be able to uproot, to uproot everything that is not of Him in our lives. He needs to uproot. He needs to be able to pull down, pull down those strongholds, pull down every stronghold that is standing in the way of Abba Yahuwah's revelations and Abba Yahuwah's ways. 
and he's going to destroy and he's going to overthrow and he's going to build and he's going to plant. And then you've got, he builds you up and then he replants. And the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, what do you see, Yeremiah? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Ah, what is the almond tree? The almond tree is the first tree to blossom. The almond tree has the blossoms. The almond tree was the very tree that is first fruits. So this is part of a first fruit company of people because the almond tree is the first tree to be able to blossom. And remember, what was the rod of Aaron that was in the, the, the Ark of the Covenant? It was the rod of Aaron, which was what? A blossom. It was the very almond tree blossom. And so at the end of the day, this is very significant because this is for a first fruit kind of a people. So he's showing him and he's saying, look, what do you see, Jeremiah? So we must understand, many times the father will ask you questions. What do you see, Jeremiah? What do you see? What do you see, my children? What do you see going on? I want to reveal myself to you. I want to show you what is going on. He says, and the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, what do you see, Jeremiah? And said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And you must understand, the almond tree looks like there's nothing on it. The almond tree, I mean, it's, it's, it's got no leaves on it. It looks like there's no life. So when you are at a place where you look like you've got no life, you will start to blossom for the Father. So many times we don't blossom in that, in that um, place of when it's the good season. But it's going to be in the season of when you're going through the winter season. When you can't even see a leaf. And it starts to blossom. And Yahuwah said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to do it. And the word of Yahuwah came to me a second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. So you see, there's a boiling pot. What is that boiling pot? Something is going to boil over. Something is going to spill. Something is about to come. There is a destruction is on its way. And I see it facing from the north. So this destruction is going to come from the north. And Yahuwah said to me, out of the north, evil is set loose on the inhabitants of the land. For look, I'm calling all the clans of the reigns of the north, hmm, declares Yahuwah. So who was calling them? Abba Yahuwah was calling the clans from the north. So do not be surprised. When things happen and we get all upset about what this, the leaders of the world is busy doing. And especially this elite. But the other Yahuwah allows them to do what needs to be done in order to bring about his purposes and his plans. So he says, and they shall come and each one, his, each one set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Yeremiah, of Yeremiah. Yerushalayim, against all its walls around and against all the cities of Yehuda. To understand, what is Jeremiah seeing? Jeremiah, who is seeing how these people are going to come and they're going to come up, uh, uh, against the beloved city of Abba Yahuwah. Now gird up your loins. So he says, and I shall pronounce my judgments. So you see, what was the word that the Father released at Passover? I am releasing my judgments. I shall pronounce my judgments against them concerning all the evil. So what is the Father doing on the earth right now? The Father is pronouncing his judgments upon the wickedness and the evil that is going on on the earth. He cannot continue to allow these things to happen. Remember one thing. His judgments is his mercy because his judgments allows people to repent. I shall pronounce my judgments against them concerning all their evil because they have forsaken me. So you see, why is Abba going to pronounce his judgments upon the earth? Because his people have, the people of the world, including his people, have forsaken him. Burnt incense to other mighty ones and bowed themselves to the works of their own hands. Does that not sound like where we are today? That is exactly where we are today. We have forsaken him. 
and we bow down to the works of our hands. Look and see. We put our trust and faith in scientists. We put our trust and faith in doctors. We put our trust and faith in the things of this world. We put our trust and our faith in everything as, a, as opposed to turning to him. Now gird up your loins and arise and speak to them all that I command you. So you see, now he's going to have to raise up his faithful prophets, his faithful servants that are going to have to be able to raise up in this hour, speaking a word that is going to have to come up against the people that are going their own way in this time where they need to repent and come back to him. Do not break down before their faces lest I break you before them. So if the prophets that he's raising up do not do what they're supposed to do, he will deal with those prophets and he will break them down before the people. For look, I have made you this day a walled city and an iron column and bronze. Walls against all the land, against the sovereigns of your day, against her heads, against her priests and against the people of the land. So look and see. Who, does the, who is the prophet going to come up against? He's going to come up against the heads. Against the priests. The shepherds. Against the people of the land that are constantly going astray and leading the people astray. And they shall fight against you, but not prevail against you. For I am with you, declares Yahuwah, to deliver you. So understand. You see, Father, there has to be a Pinchas that will be strengthened. Remember, Pinchas rose up at a time and he looked at the wickedness of what was going on. Remember when it was the, the sons of Yahuwah, these the Israelites were going to be able to fornicate with the Moabite woman. And Pinchas woke, rose up and what did he do? He came up against them. He put a spear through them. In zealousness, he rose up. And this is what the Father is looking for, a zealous people that will raise up now to be able to stand for him. And they shall fight against you, but not prevail against you, for I am with you, declares your word to deliver you. So understand, if he sends you, he's with you. You don't need to worry about anything, you just be obedient. Chapter 2. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Go, and you shall cry in the hearing of Yerushalayim, saying, Thus says Yahuwah, I remember you, the loving commitment of your youth, the love of your bridehood when you went after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown. So you see, we are to come back to that first love. We are to come back. Why is he uning us in the wilderness? Why did he bring us into the wilderness? He brought us into the wilderness so that he may be able to reveal his, his, his ways to us. He brings us into the wilderness so that he may be able to reveal himself to us. He brought the Israelites in the, into the wilderness to expose to them what was in their own hearts. And so he says, go and you shall cry in the hearing of Yerushalayim, saying that he showed us loving commitment. He has been showing us his mercy. He has been showing us his grace. He has been showing us his loving commitment all these years, for more than 2,000 years since Yeshua has come. But now, what is he saying? He's saying time is up. He's saying it's time now. That you must understand. He's going to release his judgments upon the earth. Because his people are not returning back to him. Verse 3. Israel was set apart to Yahuwah. So you see. He wants a set apart people to Yahuwah. The first fruits of his increase. So you see. He wanted a first fruit remnant. And this is what we have been. This is what we are preparing ourselves for. For Shavuot. That we may become a first fruits offering to the Father. We've already been the first fruits offering to the Father now at the time of when this is exactly when the um, the barley sheaf is, is, is raised up and Yeshua was raised up as the first barley sheaf. And now he wants a first fruits offering. And this is what he's going to do. When we get to the time of Shavuot, we will understand that this is what he did on Mount Sinai. <clears throat> on Mount Sinai, he was raising up a people, a company of priests for himself. And he says, you, you, Israel was set apart to Yahuwah. So you see, we were supposed, we are a people that are supposed to be set apart to Yahuwah. The first fruits of his increase and all who ate of it became guilty. The evil came upon them, declares Yahuwah. 
Hear the word of Yahuwah, O house of Yaakov, and all the clangs of the house of Israel. So the Father is speaking to the full house of Israel. Thus says Yahuwah, What unrighteousness have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me and went after worthless. They went after worthless, the worthlessness and became worthless. So they went after worthlessness and they became worthless. And did not they say, Where is Yahuwah? You see, when, when things go difficult, what is the first thing we say? Where is Yahuwah? Where is Yahuwah in the circumstance? Yahuwah, where are you? When we go through difficulties, instead of us being able to stand by faith, knowing that he's the one who will deliver us. Where is Yahuwah who brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and shadow of death, a land that no one passed through and where no, no one dwelt? Then I brought you into a garden land. So look and see. He wants a garden enclosed. He wants to bring you into that place of intimacy with you. So he says, I brought you into a garden land. He brought them into the promised land of the land of Israel, of, of, of Yeretz Israel. And so he took them out of the wilderness and brought them into a garden land, into the land of Yeretz Israel, to eat its fruits and its, good, its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my inheritance an abomination. So you see, what have we done? And this is why I'm saying, this is a book for us to repent before him, to come before him in, on behalf of our own nation, on behalf of our own land, on behalf of our own people and say, Father, what have we done? You have given us your commands. You have given us your set-apart spirit. You have given us everything that we need for us to be able to be set apart unto you. And what have we done? We have forsaken all. We have forsaken you. And we have defiled the land with our abominations of the lusts of our flesh. The priests did not say, where is Yahuwah? And those who handled the Torah did not know me. So do you see, who is handling the Torah right now? Who is handling the Torah right now? He's given the Torah into the hands of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which are these rabbis, and yet they do not know Yahushua. So how are they going to be able to give you the fullness of the bread of life, of the word that brings life, when they themselves are not filled with the Ruach of Yahuwah? So what does he say? The priests did not say, where is Yahuwah? And those who handle the Torah did not know me. And the shepherds transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after matters that did not profit. So you see, instead of the prophets being able to bring people to repentance, to turn them back to the ways of the Father, what are the prophets giving the people? Words that tickle the ears. To get them to chase after what? Things that profit nothing. Things that's not going to help you in the days ahead. And you see, we want to be able to learn the Torah from those that are not even filled with the Ruach of Yahuwah. They don't know him. And then the shepherds have transgressed against the father because the shepherds start wanting to speak because of gain. That was the whole message of today. Therefore, I still contend with you, declares Yahuwah, and with your children's children I contend. For pass beyond the isles of Kittim and see and send to Kadar and observe well and see if there has been any like this. Has a nation changed that mighty ones, which are not mighty ones, but my people have changed my esteem for that which does not profit? How sad. We have changed the glory of Yahuwah to be in the presence of Yahuwah and to be able to dwell with Yahuwah in his set-apart place in order to be able to chase after that which does not profit. So it's all about me, myself and I. Therefore, I still contend with you, declares Yahuwah, and with your children's children I contend. For pass beyond the isles. Okay, we've read that, sorry. So it says, verse 12, Be amazed, O heavens, at this, and be frightened. Be utterly dried up, declares Yahuwah. So you see, we should be frightened. Why? Because at the end of the day, what have we done? What have we done? 
we have turned to things that have not profited us anything. As opposed to, we have traded his presence coming into the Holy of Holies for a religious system that just caters to the flesh in the outer courts. And this is where we want to dwell in the outer courts. Be amazed, though, so he says, Be amazed, O heavens, and this be frightened, be utterly dried up, declares Yahuwah. For my people have done two evils. Here we go. What are the two evils that the people have done? They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. So you see, they rather go and drink from the polluted cisterns. They hew out for themselves cisterns, cracked cisterns which do not hold water. So instead of us drinking the living water from him that brings life, we rather chase after things that profit us nothing, that do not bring life, that do not bring us back into his image and back into his ways, which is what we should be coming back to. To repent from our wicked ways. So we rather want to listen to teachings that tickle the ears, that give us more knowledge, but that profit nothing. Is Israel a servant? Was he, was he born in the house? Why is he given to plunder? So you see, now we are servants that is given to plunder instead of us becoming sons. The young lions roared at him. They growled and made his land waste. His cities have been burnt without inhabitant. Even the sons of Noph and of Tafinus have shaven the crown of your head. Have you not done this to yourselves by forsaking Yahuwah? So you see, if we forsake Yahuwah and his ways, then we bring upon ourselves the destruction that is going to come because we have forsaken him. We have forsaken his way. Have you not done this to yourself by forsaking Yahuwah, your lure? When he led you in the way. And today we learned about the door. Yeshua is the door who is the way. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's given us a pattern that we should follow. But we don't want to go the narrow way. We want the broad way where everything goes. And now why take the way to Mitzrayim? To drink the waters of Shehur. Or why take the way of a shushur to drink the waters of the river? Amazing. A lot about the water. A lot about the water. And you see, we must understand that the water was, it's just like Andre said earlier. What was the judgment that came upon the people right from the beginning? The very first judgment that came upon the people when the father sent his wrath was through the water. Now it's going to come through fire. But you see, the water plays a very important role because the water is the living water that we need to drink. But instead, we want to drink from fountains, we want to drink from cisterns that are polluted, that are not bringing the pure, unadulterated word of the Father because we want one part and we do not want two parts. We only want the good part, but we don't want the other. See, the two pillars, we need the two pillars your own evil instructions, you and your backsliding. Now listen, your own evil instructs you. Your own evil instructs you. And your backslidings reprove you. Know therefore and see that it is evil and bitter that you have forsaken Yahuwah, your lure, and that my fear is not in you. So you see, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. Now why do people not have wisdom? Because they have, for, they have no fear of him. They've made him their friend. They have decided that they can do whatever they want, and he's not going to judge them. He's not going to come against them. This is exactly where the house of Israel was. The house of Israel had a covenant with him, and they were saying to, to Jeremiah, Jeremiah! Don't come and speak these words to us, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, we are the anointed and the appointed and the chosen of the Father. And Jeremiah is saying, you are going into exile. So they would throw him in jail. Are we going to read the whole book and we're going to understand? Jeremiah went through a very difficult time. Because, you see, we are in a time now, people no longer fear Yahuwah. 
People think that they can continue in their wicked way and he's not going to judge them. They can continue in the lust of their flesh and he's not going to judge them. They can continue in sowing to the flesh and he's not going to judge them. Yes, you will be judged. Because he says, your own evil instructs you. You allow your own flesh to instruct you. You are led by your own flesh ways and you are backslidden because you are not hot for me. You are just that one that is wanting to be able to be lukewarm. For of old I have broken your yoke and torn off your chastisements and you said I am not serving you when on every high hill and under every green tree you lay down a wall. So there you go. He says, you prostitute me. You prostitute me around every corner. you got many idols in your hearts and you put the other things before me and therefore you prostitute me. Yet, I had planted you a choice vine, all of its true seed. How then have you turned before me into a degenerated plant of a strange vine? So you see, now we become a strange vine. We are not the vine that is the vine that is being able to be able to be. He's the vine and we are the branches. And he's the one pruning the vine. And he's the one having to be able to um, squeeze that, 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 those grapes and to bring out the wine. No, we don't want the chastisement and we don't want that pruning. So we become a wild vine because we want no pruning. We want to do it our way and we want to go our own way. Although you wash yourselves with lye and use much soap, Yet your crookedness is ingrained before me, declares the Master Yahuwah. So you see, then we try and patch ourselves up with our own righteous acts. So because we're going to go to church and because we're going to read the Bible, because we're going to pray a, a few prayers and because we're going to be able to dance a few dances, a few songs and worship in the, in the church, but we're not willing to repent and turn from our wicked ways in the way that we have gone astray and truly return back to his way and his word. And so therefore we try and offer him the works of our flesh to be able to satisfy him. Just like Cain did when he came to offer him a sacrifice, not first fruits offering. So Cain did it his way. And are the people of Yahuwah still trying to serve him his way, their way, building a golden calf and saying, we will put you in our little calf thing and you can we will serve you our way by building a little golden calf because this golden calf is the one that's going to lead us out. So we put him in our box and we put him in our mindset of our box and we pray so that he may have, we, he may do what we want. How do you say I, how do you say I am not defiled? I have not gone after the bowls. See, your way in the valley, know what you have done. A swift dromedary breaking loose in her ways. So you see, then we still want to turn around and say, but I am not defiled. I have not gone off the bowls. No, I am the, the appointed and the anointed. I am the righteousness of Yahuwah because I've received Jesus. But yet I'm not coming back to his way. And I'm not even obeying his commands for that matter. But yet I am the one that is now thinking that I stand so right before him. A wild donkey used to the wilderness, sniffing the wind in the desire of her being. And in her time of mating, who turns her away, all those who seek her need not weary themselves in her, in her month. They find her. Keep your foot from being bare and your throat from thirst. But you said... It is useless because I love strangers and after them I go. So you see, instead of us seeking the presence of the Father in his way, we seek after other lovers, which is what Hosea chapter 2 says. And that is what Israel was. That is why then Hosea married a prostitute to be able to have the Father bring back this prostituting Israel to come back into the fold. Verse 26, and the thief is ashamed when he is found out. So is the house of Israel ashamed, they and their sovereigns and their heads and their priests and their prophets. So you see, Father is eventually going to shame this house. We are going to see the shame of the heads 
of the nations. We are going to see the shame of the priests and we are going to see the shame of the prophets because they have not done what the Father has wanted them to do. Saying to a tree, you are my father, and to a stone, you gave me birth. For they have turned their back on me and not their face, but in the time of their calamity, they say, arise and save us. Oh my goodness, saying to a tree, so what do we do? We put up a Christmas tree and we have our Christmas festivals and we put, to, we put up a tree and then we'll be able to come and worship it by putting our presents underneath the tree and we do our whole celebrations of Christmas and Easter and all these little things, running after little Easter bunnies and doing our little Christmas feasts and yet we are now supposed to be Father's people. So he says, For they have turned their back to me and not their face. But in the time of their calamity, they say, arise and save us. Now, you see, isn't that exactly what it is? So, you see, in the church, they go their way, they do their thing, and we in this community, we go our way, we do our thing, and in, you know, uh, whether it be in the church or whether it be in, in, in whatever, in the Torah movement, it doesn't really matter. We go our own way, we do our own thing, we, 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 we don't want to conform, we don't want to turn away from the wicked ways and the lusts of our flesh and the pride of life and all these things. We want to still do our own thing, but man, when the calamity comes, then we want to turn around and say, now save us. Save us, Father. But where are your mighty ones that you have made for yourselves? You see, so now you want to put your trust and your faith in the works of the flesh. You want to put your trust and your faith in the things of this world. You want to put your trust and your faith in the V thing, which is where so many of the people that call themselves children of the Most High, that have put their trust and their faith in this. And when the time comes when they are sick and they are on their deathbed and they're going to cry out to him and he's going to say, you will now bow down to the master that you chose because you chose that master to lead you. But where are your mighty ones that, one, that you have made for yourselves? Let them arise. See if they save you in the time of your calamity. Because understand, when they start to put on all these things with the water, with everything, for those that are now going with the serpent seed that is out there, through the water, through all these things, for those that have decided that they are going to put their trust and their faith in this very thing, they are soon going to realize that they have bowed down to the wrong master. Because your mighty ones have become as many as your cities, O oh, Yehuda. Why do you complain to me? You all have transgressed against me, declares Yehuah. In vain have I stricken your children. They received no instruction. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. So understand, when the destruction is going to come, it's going to take prophet and priest alike. Because we did not want to receive instruction. We did not want to serve him in his instructions. O generation, see the word of Yahuwah. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of darkness? Why do my people say, we have broken loose, we come to you no more? Would a maiden forget her ornaments or a bride her headband? Yet my people have forgotten me. Days without number. Wow, how sad. Is that not where we are today? His people have forgotten him. Days without number. They go their own way and they go astray. Why do you embellish your way to seek love? Therefore you have even taught the evil woman your ways. So you see, our own destructive, lustful ways of our flesh, we've now brought it into the church to say more more of this and more of that, more lust, more flesh, more everything. More prosperity, more everything. Understand, Father will give the prosperity to those whom he wants to give it to for him to be able to have his way, for him to be able to do the work that he needs to be done. But what have we done? What have we done? We then teach these ways from a pulpit destructive ways even on the corners of your clothing is found the blood of the lives of the poor innocents you did not find them breaking in but in spite of all these you say because i am innocent certainly his displeasure shall turn from me see i shall bring judgment on you because you say i have not sinned wow. Wow. 
Now, if there is a word for us today that we cannot stand before the Father and say, oh, we have not sinned. And this is the problem that we find going on in most places is that we are not bringing people to repentance. And to bring them to repentance means to turn to Teshuvah. Teshuvah is to turn and go the other way. So if this is what I was doing and he says that it is wrong, then I better make a decision today to turn and to say, I do this no more. Because if you don't, you will receive Abba Yahuwah's judgment. You must understand he's not going to tolerate our sin forever. And the biggest problem that we have is that right now, in the body of Messiah, we need to acknowledge our sinful ways. We need to stand in the gap as an intercessor, which is what Jeremiah was called to be, an intercessor to be able to weep before the Father on behalf of those that are saying, we are the righteousness of Yahuwah. We have done nothing. We don't need to repent because you see, I, I listen to these groups where they send out these prayer meetings, these prayer, prayer points and these prayer things, and they're always sending out these prayer things on all these groups, and now it's this thing that's happened in the land, and now we send out a prayer. And man, when I listen to these people praying, then I stand back and I say, my goodness, they prayed everything, but yet I didn't hear them repent once. They don't see themselves as being wicked in this land. All they want to turn around and say is that the Father needs to bless them and the Father's got a covenant with us and the Father needs to bless us because we are so holy that we need him to bless us. And this is all I ever hear in these prayer groups. When they start with these prayer groups and I see these prayers coming forth and now we're all going to gather together and we're going to start to pray for this because this is going to come and this is going to come. And then they're gathering with all these prayer things and then when I listen to them praying, I say, where did you even start off with repentance? No repentance because you see, we're not sinful at all. We are now the house that needs to raise up and that we can be so filled with arrogance and pride to demand and command that the Father needs to be able to deliver us and keep us from all these things, but yet we are not willing to bow our knee and turn from our wicked way. Why do you go about so much to change your way? Why do you go about so much to change your way? Even of Mitzrayim, you are to be ashamed as you are ashamed of a shashur. Even from this one, you shall go forth with your hands on your head. For Yahuwah has rejected those you trust and you shall not prosper by them. So, oh, who are the people that we are following, which is exactly what was spoken to us today in the teaching that the Father gave us? Which shepherds are we putting our faith and our trust in? Who are we listening to? Who are the ones that we have trusted who are the ones that we have trusted that at the end of the day he has rejected because they are not bringing the people back to his way and getting the people to repent and to come back to the truth of his word. For Yahuwah has rejected those you trust. So even those shepherds that we put our trust in, you shall not prosper by them. So understand, he's the one that you need to turn to He's the one that you need to listen to. And if you are listening to shepherds that is not bringing you back to his way, then what are we to do? That shepherd or prophet or priest is going to lead us astray. So, Amen. Abba Yahuwah, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this book of Jeremiah who to really make us understand that we today are no different to these Israelites. Just like when we read through the book of Exodus and we read through the book of Numbers and we read through Deuteronomy and we read through Leviticus and we read through what your children had to go through and in them rebellious ways and how they continue to rebel against you. And Father, if I look at where we are today, we are no different. We are no different, Abba. Because we still turn to the arm of the flesh. Oh, and this is the book where you are going to open up to us so beautifully. What is it that if we, what will happen if we put our trust in the flesh and in the arm of the flesh? We will receive nothing from you. Because this is exactly what Israel kept doing. Being led astray by the false prophets that wanted to lead them into the easy path. 
the path that was telling them, well, you know what, you have a covenant with me, so therefore you're going to go through nothing. So Abba Yahuwah, I thank you. I thank you for what you are revealing to us in this time as we continue to read this book of Yeremiah. I thank you, Father, that you will raise up your Yeremiahus in this hour that need to speak to your people a word that will come from your heart. In Yahushua's name I pray this. Amen.